Hey, it's Efreed Eater. Today, let's talk about RoboPit. RoboPit is a Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn arena fighter, in which players create a custom robot and fight their way to the top. It was published by Coco Pelli in 1996, and developed by the robot-sounding Ultron. Coco Pelli was a subsidiary of THQ, and the similarly obscure Ultron is pretty much just a publisher of licensed games, even up till the current age of 3DS. I'm going to be reviewing the Sony PlayStation version, since I've never had a Sega Saturn. The graphics in RoboPit were decent for the time, though today they're pretty blocky and polygonal. The character models look nice, with a lot of different variations on the different robot parts, and they have a nice cartoony look. The stages, on the other hand, while looking pretty nice, they can be a little empty. There are multiple times a day per level, but I would say overall there aren't enough levels. You pretty much just have four different lighting effects and different sky effects per level. There's no variation in level size, which is a little bit of a bummer. And overall, I think the levels could be a little bigger, considering that a ring out is a prominent feature of the game. Sometimes you can get a ring out without even trying. I also wish there were special levels for the special robots that you encounter in the game. Ultron did a great job in the sound department for RoboPit. The music is fantastic, and it resembles the early Mega Man games in tone and composition. It really gets your blood pumping to keep on fighting. Take a listen to these tracks. How about that? The space level has a really cool song where this voice keeps saying, Operator. Operator. It's awesome. The sound effects are similarly great. Swords clash, sides cut. You have some cool ricochet sound effects off the shield. Lasers sound like lasers. Cannon sounds like a cannon. Special really sounds like fire ripping up the opponent. It sounds good. My only real complaint with the sound department is the voice acting. The announcer has a pretty weird orientalist kind of tone that I don't really like. I think it just sounds awkward and it's a little bit offensive. You weep. The controls in Robo Pit are adequate and logical. Similarly to a game like Tekken, Square controls the left hand and Circle controls the right hand. The X button makes your character jump, and triangle makes you block. You can sidestep with L1 and R1, and you use your specials with R2 and L2, each one having a different ability. When you start the game, you create a custom robot from a variety of parts. The head or body is rated in terms of power, which determines your range special, weight, which determines your melee special and speed, and defense. The legs are rated in speed, how fast you move, turn, which is your robot's handling, and jump, the height of your jump. The hands, which you obtain more of as you play the game, are rated in power, which determines the damage you do to the opponent, speed, the speed of your attack, defense, the damage taken on a block, and the type of attack that hand is. Those go through A to H. Hands of the A type let you punch or pick up objects on the field. B type weapons are ranged weapons that don't have ammo. They're weapons like flails or even boomerangs. You have to wait after you throw the weapon for it to come back, so they can be a little awkward to use. C type weapons are slow bladed weapons like swords. The D type weapons are fast stabbing weapons like the lance or the spear. Weapons in the E category are ranged weapons that do have ammo. These range from crossbows to lasers and even the really strange techie techie. After you've used all your ammo, you can still jab with the weapon, so it doesn't become totally useless. Weapons in the F category grab the enemy and pull them closer. You can think of Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. 
RPG type weapons are shields that you can block or bash the enemy with. I feel like they're actually pretty effective. The H weapons are heavy bludgeoning weapons like hammers. The last part of the robot, the eyes, are just for looks. I wish they had a few more options. For each part of the robot you select, you get to pick a color. But I think there could have been more colors, and also you can only pick one color per part unless you pick the black-red combo option. Once you've got your robot made, you start at the bottom of a list of fighters. There are a hundred computer-controlled robots to fight. Each robot has a point total. The higher points they have, the higher up they go on the list, and the stronger the robot is considered. You can fight robots stronger than you up to a certain point, and you can fight any robot lower than you. A match begins with the robots a short distance away from each other, and it ends with a KO, a ring out, or when the time runs out. You have 99 seconds for match. You earn points for a victory, and you lose points on defeat. This goes true for the opponents, too. Stronger robots will give you more points. KOs will give more points than ring outs, and ring outs will give more points than time over. Defeated robots will lose an arm to an opponent. Likewise, if you lose, your opponent gets to take one of your arms. There are five special robots in the game that each have their own special weapon that they're highly skilled in. You can have the AI fight for you instead of fighting yourself, but there aren't really any options to it. Your robot doesn't really act very intelligent, and like I said, you don't have any control over it at all. It's not like you can program it with some kind of list of commands or even to tell it to be more defensive or more aggressive. Also, it's a video game. I mean, the idea is to play it, right? RoboPit is pretty fun at first, but during the playthroughs it became really repetitive, especially near the end. While initially the game seems to have a lot of different weapons, you can obtain them all very quickly. Once you've found weapons that fit your fighting style, you'll probably keep using those weapons too. Each time you use a weapon, its skill level increases, and that determines the damage it does to the opponent. The final boss in the game, Zeo Gygus, is very hard, and you can only reach him by getting to rank 1. The thing is, once you beat him, that's it. The game is only around 2.5 hours in length, but when I used to play it as a kid, it always seemed a little longer, probably because I would mess around with the different weapons. There is also a multiplayer mode where you can fight against your friends. It's a nice addition, but it's not too deep. It's pretty much the same as the one player mode. After I beat the game the first time, I tried these two codes to play as Zeo Gygus and Coco Pelli. Neither of them worked, of course, and I wasn't surprised. I don't remember them working back when I was a kid. There were a lot of codes back in those days. It's something I actually miss from current games, because some of them were pretty cool. The only thing is, since the internet was new, people used websites like GameFAQs to just spread some pretty strange urban legends. A pretty notable example is the old push the truck to get Mew back in Pokemon Red and Blue. Oh, and since I didn't have a memory card when I was really little, this is how we had to load the game. The game generates a password for you and you had to put in this long thing every single fucking time. Jeez. So how does RoboPit stack up to what I remember? Well, I think it's a little worse. When I was little, I don't remember the game feeling so repetitive, and I don't remember the controls feeling so stiff. I do remember the battles ending pretty quick. I would just use two of the lasers and blast my enemy off the screen. Now when I play it, I try to get KOs since they give you more points, but I don't know, it's still kind of the same old thing over and over and over. To reach the number one spot, it takes a hell of a lot of fights, and it seems so repetitive towards the end. You're just fighting the same guys over and over again. The final boss is a little cheap, because he blocks all your attacks and does a whole lot of damage. He also can't fall off the edge. I like that they made him a little harder, but I feel like there could have just been more depth to this game overall. So on my scale from good, neutral, to bad, I... Well, I'd give Robopit a good. 
I think it's actually a pretty fun game. And if you can pick it up on the cheap, it's pretty worth it. That's it for this time. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button down there. And you can subscribe for more, too. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.